Notice that the message this morning is entitled Retreat, Remain or Run. And looking at the time that I have, I have to run. In our scripture reading just now, King Ben-Hadad, the king of Armia, or the king of Syria, had laid siege to the city of Samaria. And the Armenians were happy to continue their patient siege till the Jews in the city either surrender or die of starvation. The city of Samaria now was cut off from its supply of food and provisions, and the people there are suffering and things are getting desperate. Food prices have escalated or rocketed because uh, food in the city is scarce. According to what the passage, if you read the passage uh, earlier on, it will say that a donkey's head was sold uh, for 10 shekels, if I'm not mistaken, or 30 shekels, one which is equivalent today to one kilogram of silver. If one gram of silver is 35 ringgit, one kilogram of silver for a donkey's head is worth 35,000 ringgit at that time. And uh, these people have become so desperate that they had even turned to cannibalism, eating one another. But all is not lost. In comes the prophet Elisha, and he has a message from God. He has assured the city that the famine will not continue and that by tomorrow, there will be abundant food, that prices will begin to become cheap. Upon hearing this message, the king's uh, royal officer cynically remarked and mocks Elisha, doubting, that the pow doubting God's power and even that uh, God saying that God even cannot save this city. But meanwhile, outside the city walls, in the camp of the Armians, another drama is taking place. The Armians have been rooted. Now, some scholars say that God had sent an army of the angels that uh, among them, so much so that they retreated so swiftly. And in the camp, only a few lepers knew what has happened. Who were these lepers? Have you ever seen a leper before? I don't remember seeing a leper before. I remember in uh, Malaysia, there's one leper colony in Sungai Buloh, long time ago. But personally, I've not seen a leper. The closest I've come to to see is a beggar. A beggar in a very dis despicable condition. I remember uh, I even went to India and there was this beggar that was holding a placard. He says that, please help me. I'm deaf and dumb, and I cannot find work to support myself. And he was holding a, a tin cup in his hand. And the moment the rupees fell into the camp, he would say, thank you, sir. Leprosy. Leprosy was an incurable disease back then. It is probably equivalent to AIDS that people suffer today. And lepers were the outcasts of society. And that is why you find the lepers outside the city. Lepers were considered living corpses. They were the living dead. Because they had to be separated from society because of fear of contagion, because it's a contagious disease, leprosy. In the Bible, leprosy is viewed as a symbol of sin. Just like leprosy isolates people, sin separates us from God. Just like leprosy corrupts the human body, sin produces inner decay, unbelief, and eventually spiritual death. But these four lepers understood their plight. They knew what their condition were. But the problem with most of us is that we fail to see our own spiritual condition. 
We see ourselves as fairly clean, yet all of us have been corrupted by sin. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans 3.23 When people say that we have a clean conscience, they're actually telling you that uh, they have a bad memory. They don't like be con being confronted with the truth about themselves. And I'm sure many of us, when confronted, we would like to always deny it, rationalize it, or even ignore it. No, denial of sin, someone says, is just like a man. He kept reading about the connection between smoking and cancer. And he became very, very convinced. But you know what he ended up doing? He ended up quitting reading instead of smoking. Or are we like the leper who refused to receive medical treatment because he refused to admit that he had leprosy? Have we viewed our sins, as the Bible says, as leprous sores? And this is how God views us. In the book of Isaiah 64, verse 6, he says, We are as an unclean thing, and all our righteousness are like filthy rags. You know, those days when you see a leper, they'll call them what? Unclean! Unclean! And what do these lepers wear? Filthy rags. Our leprous sins nail Jesus Christ on the cross. Do we hate our sins enough to turn to the Lord Jesus Christ? The lepers were forced to live outside the city gate they were outcasts, kept apart from the city, and now they were half dead from hunger and their disease. Now, these four lepers realized that they had but three choices. And these three choices tell us the three directions we can possibly take in our spiritual lives. The first choice, verse 4 tells us that if we say we will enter or go into the city, then the famine is in the city and we shall die there. To retreat. The first direction that they can take is to retreat, to go back to the city. Likewise, this morning, we can choose to go backwards in our own spiritual lives. What awaited the lepers in the city? It says there famine. Amos chapter 8, verse 11 says, Behold, the days cometh, said the Lord God, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, nor a thirst for water, but of the hearing of the words of the Lord. Yes, going back, retreating, will only result in us losing our spiritual walk with God. The famine of God is in your heart when you go back to the city, when you retreat. Life becomes meaningless, unfulfilling. Nothing can make your life more miserable and more unfulfilling than going back on the words spiritually. In fact, uh, the Bible also says in the book of Hebrews 10, 35, Now the just shall live by faith. But if any man draw back, if any man retreat, what does the Lord say? My soul shall have no pleasure in him. Secondly, what awaited them in the city? Besides the famine, there were fatalities. A spiritual death meets those who choose to retreat or to go backwards. Luke 9, verse 62, the words of Jesus himself said, And Jesus said unto him, No man, having put his hand to the plough and looking back, is fit 
for the kingdom. Remember Lot's wife. What did she do? She looked back. How do we retreat and go backward in our relationship with God? Symptoms are we pick up an old habit or we have or old sins that we have previously been forgiven of? Or we pick up an old habit that slowly chips away at our spiritual lives? Or maybe we could put our own devotional life as a low priority in our lives? Or even we may think that going to church is no longer a priority anymore. These are signs that tell us that we are retreating. The second option that the lepers had was to remain. Verse 4 tells us that now if we sit here, if we sit, sit still here, stay, remain, we what? Die also. They had old, earlier said that in verse 3. Why stay here until we die? Well, we don't like to talk about dying. The second option is to remain. You know, one of the things that uh, people like to say about Seventh-day Adventists or SDAs uh, is uh, sitting down always, you know, not doing anything, remaining where you are. All right. Suka Dudo Adventist, SDA. Huh? What would happen to them if they remain? Well, they had already contracted a fatal disease and leprosy is a type of sin that slowly kills you. Eventually, they'll die if they remain there. And their disease would not would eat their life away. And of course, if they were to remain there, to stay there and do nothing, it would mean that they will suffer starvation and death as doing nothing about, just like people when they are confronted with the claims of Jesus Christ, they do nothing. Similarly, if we choose to stay right where we are spiritually, we can experience certain spiritual death. There was this story that was told about a missionary who uh, found this group of people in the jungle, the tribal people, and he helped them to know about the time of the day by giving them a sandal. You know what a sandal is? Right? When you put this uh, object in the, in, the, in the sun, out in the open, it will be able to, by a shadow, you will be able to tell you what time of the day it is. Now, this a group of tribal people, they regarded this sandal as something that is very sacred, something that is very holy. And you know what they did? They built a special altar and they placed this sandal in that altar. And what happened to that sandal? It began to... There's nothing... It, it has defeated the purpose of giving the sandal in the first place. Just like us. You know we have uh, treated our religion in the same way. We, like the tribe people, they have honoured the sandal, but they made it of no practical use. They kept it under the altar. And that's how many people regard Christianity today. It has become something that they have enclosed within these beautiful walls of this century, the stained glass windows of cathedrals, but far worse, they also wall off Christianity from their own individual daily lives. And lastly, the first option they had was to retreat. The second option was to remain. And the third option, to run. So let's look at what they did. What did the lepers do? They ran, right? And where did they go? They ran to the camp of the enemy. Right? Uh, as we look at uh, verse 5, it says, And they rose up in twilight to go unto the camp of the Syrians, where they were come to the uttermost part of the camp. Behold, there was no man there. These lepers 
were willing to take the risk, say that if the Syrians save us, we shall live. If they kill us, we shall die. Anyway, we are going to die. That's what they were thinking. They had only one way to go, and that was to the enemy, to the Syrians. Same way, we have only one way to go as far as our spiritual life is concerned. And that way is to God, to Jesus Christ. I am the way, the truth, and the life. What did they find when they arrived there? The end of verse 5 tells us there was no man there. They did not find the enemy there. In fact, Instead, they found great riches. What did they find? Uh, can we put the next? Uh, when these lepers came to the uttermost part of the camp, they went into one tent, did eat and drink. First, they were taken care of physically. Then they carried ten silver and gold raiment and went and hid it. They got treasures and came again and entered another camp and carried thence also and went and hid. So what did they find? when they ran to the camp of the enemy. Firstly, they found no enemy there. In fact, in fact, they found riches beyond imagination. Great riches. What does this great riches represent? When you come to Jesus Christ, He has promised us the great riches of salvation to us. In fact, there's an analogy that is used uh, by I believe the Apostle Paul, where he said that we are going to be clothed by the Holy Spirit. So those clothed there represents actually Luke 24 verse 20, 49 says, I'm going to send you, that's the, the words of Jesus, he says, what my Father has promised, but stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. They were fed, they were clothed. Spiritually, when you are fed, and your clothes, then what do you do? The next verse, verse 9, tells us that then they said one to another, we do not well. This day is a day of good tidings, and we hold our peace. If we tarry this morning like, till morning light, some mischief will come upon us. Now therefore come, that we may go and tell the king's household. They were fed, they were clothed, and now they had to go and share the blessings that God has given them. They had, finally they found a desire to share the good news with others. No, they could have said that, why bother about all these inhabitants in the city? Look how they treated us. They never even bothered about us. They treated us like outcasts. No. Serve them right, you know. Let them suffer. Let's enjoy ourselves. But, their conscience were pricked. They say that we do not well. This day is a day of good tidings. And we hold our peace from outcasts, from those, from people who have been treated as uh, outcasts of society. Now they are bearers of good news to the city. No, that's how God works in us. Someone said that, you know, uh, evangelism is like one beggar telling another where he found bread. Isn't that wonderful? Evangelism is defined as one beggar telling another where he found bread. And the season of good tidings is coming. Christmas. And we do not well this day of good tidings. We hold our peace and if we tarry till the morning light, some mischief will come upon us. So what will you find? What will you find when you run? You will find that God is not a God, a judgmental God, a God who is out to condemn you, but a friend. What do you find when you run? You will find great wealth of peace, hope, security and love. And what else would you find? You will find a desire to share the good news with others. Have you found 
the riches in Christ beyond all that we could ask or think? If you have, why not share this wealth of hope, joy and peace with others? Have you a place to respond to the Lord this morning and make your move to where God wants you to go? I hope you will not retreat nor remain where you are, but run in the direction where He wants you to go. God bless you as you contemplate on the words today.